Thank you. There's a, a rule in show business, never follow an intelligent talking dog. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, Marianne and Christoph for uh, inviting me here, and not just me, but inviting leaders of entertainment education from around the world. This, for people who work in this field, is really quite special to have uh, uh, Miguel Sabido and Arvind Singhal and Martin Bowman and uh, Peter Forderer and their students, many of whom are here as well, is really quite extraordinary. So in addition to the pleasure of bringing us uh, uh, to learn from the German experience, uh, to collect us from around the world is really quite wonderful. Thank you. Uh, the Norman Lear Center is a center of research and innovation located at the uh, University of Southern California within the Annenberg School for, uh, for Communication and Journalism. And I just thought to give a little context what we mean when we say entertainment. And uh, we use a very broad conception of that, and that is the capturing and holding of attention and the monetizing of the capturing and holding of attention is the entertainment industry. So when we talk about entertainment, we do mean the common popular things like uh, movies and television and uh, music and sports and so on, but we also will include in our definition things like museums. I mean, I went to the Pergamon the other day, and it's, uh, there are ways in which it is like Disneyland. And the ways in which uh, domains that used to be separate and distinct from entertainment, like, for example, journalism, or politics, or architecture and urban design, the way in which entertainment has conquered virtually every aspect of reality, both for good and for ill. And the way we look at entertainment's impact on society is through a series of projects. We have about 12 active projects in any given time. And they range, for example, from the impact of intellectual property law and technology on creativity in realms like music, fashion, and scientific research, or uh, an effort to improve the quality of local television news coverage of politics, or uh, a way to correlate people's entertainment tastes, preferences, and habits with their political views. So those are some examples, and then among the examples of the projects that we have is entertainment education. And within entertainment education, we have done uh, things in a whole variety of areas. They include, for example, an effort to use entertainment to increase the political participation of young people, or to use entertainment to encourage people to have careers in public service. And health is one of those areas. So that's the context in, in which uh, what I'm talking about today occurs. Uh, as we have been hearing in the last couple of days, uh, in the area of health, as in the, of every other area that we've been talking about, uh, entertainment is an accidental curriculum. The uh, US government funded a study a couple of years ago, and they found that six out of 10 Americans said they were regular viewers of primetime television. And of those regular viewers, six out of 10 said that they had learned something new about health in the last 16 months from television. And one out of 10, sorry, three out of 10 of those people said that what they had learned had actually changed their behavior. So it's the power of entertainment to affect people's behavior, here specifically talking about health, that, that is my subject and is the, uh, the focus of our project, Hollywood Health and Society. 
And I have to say that uh, there is the name of our program is somewhat more poetic in German, a Hollywood uh, Gesundheit und Gesellschaft. It just sounds better. So thank you for that. Um, there are uh, in Hollywood there are more than a hundred groups whose purpose is to get movies or television shows to do something. They are so prevalent that many shows have actually hired people to act as gatekeepers to deal with these people who come to them and say, do this or do that. So I want to distinguish what Hollywood Health and Society does from those groups. Uh, almost all of those groups are for single issues. So diabetes, lung disease, rape, gun violence, it's one focus. We deal with every issue under the umbrella of public health and safety. We are also not advocates. All those groups have an agenda. They want a certain thing put into a show, and they are pressuring those shows to do it. We are a resource. Like the Science and Entertainment Exchange, we are available for you, is our message. Use us as you choose. We are within the bosom of the industry. The Writers Guild of America is the place where we are located. All our meetings and briefings and our boards, they all exist within the Writers Guild. So we are working from within rather than from without. We also use a transmedia approach. The storyline accuracy work we do for what appears on television and it's almost exclusively television that we do for various uh, reasons, uh, that is only a part of the story. We also use outreach through other media to the audience. Now, I'll, I'll get back to, to that and to some other points. And as Sean said, also a very big uh, part of what we do is research and evaluation uh, virtually uh, alone in this regard among uh, these organizations. The, the Lear Center has been around now for almost 11 years. And when I started Hollywood Health and Society, it was the first program that we started. So it is now about to enter its 10th year. Um, we are funded largely by the US federal government. And our number one sponsor since the beginning has been the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other federal agencies that have supported us are uh, the uh, health resource, I'm sorry, the uh, Division of Transplantation of the uh, Department of Health and Human Services, the National Institutes of Health, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, and the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. And in recent years, our federal funding has been joined by private philanthropy in uh, the funds from the California Endowment and also from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, whose focus is on global health issues. Uh, what I'd like to do today is explain our model. How does it work? How have we been doing this for the last 10 years? And uh, I divided it into the outreach we do, outreach to industry, outreach to the public, outreach to policymakers. In addition to outreach, we do research and evaluation, and we also have an advisory board, which plays an important role in this. So I'm going to take you through these, starting with outreach to industry. And so here are the six ways, and I'm going to talk about each specifically, but I wanted to give you an overview. These are the six ways in which we conduct outreach to industry. Expert briefings and consultations panel discussions, our own website, tip sheets, a newsletter, and a series of awards. So let me talk about those, starting with our briefings and consultations. We have, this is a portrait of one year in Hollywood Health and Society. It's the year 2008, 2009. We're now compiling the statistics for 09, uh, 10, so I don't have those, but this is the most recent year we have them. We have, in that one year, we worked with 43 television shows, including Grey's Anatomy, House, 
Law and Order, SVU, CSI, Brothers and Sisters, One Life to Live, both primetime and daytime soaps. And we worked with, in that one year, 14 different networks. We responded to 307 inquiries from TV shows on health-related storylines and topics. We have a website, we have a phone number, and all the work that we do is for free. Uh, the uh, results of that work in that one year was that we confirmed the air dates of 101 storylines that we consulted on, which becomes relevant because when we know ahead of time about an air date, we can do some research about it. So the inquiries uh, function in a very simple way. They get in touch with us, and they either ask a specific question or a kind of generic question. Uh, I, I have a plot, and I want this to happen, so what's the disease? And we then don't figure it out. We are a liaison, and we connect them to experts in uh, medicine, health, and public safety all around the US and now increasingly all around the world. We have several thousand experts in our database, and we only put an expert in our database if we have worked with them and coached them so they understand what it means to consult with a writer. We also uh, have panel discussions that we hold right at the Writers Guild. So we will put on uh, a topic uh, that is of interest to us, and we hope it's of interest to writers. So uh, in, in that year or recently, addiction, fact and fiction, uh, a world of stories, which is about global health stories, um, uh, place matters, which is about the, in particular, how income is a huge determinant of public health. Uh, beyond Aaron Brockovich, something about uh, toxins in the environment. Who shall live and who shall die and why, uh, which was about uh, violence uh, and unnecessary deaths from disease. So in this way, by putting on these briefings, we are in some ways choosing topics to get them onto the radar screen of writers, but it's all voluntary. This there, you want to come, great. We want to, we want to throw a spotlight on it. Similarly, we call the writers, the showrunners, and we say, you know, the most marvelous expert is coming to town next week. This person knows everything there is about epidemiolo epidemiology or biological warfare. We thought your writers might be interested. We'd like to bring him or her in for an hour. And almost always, they say yes. So even though we are a resource, we're a, an especially friendly and a little bit aggressive resource trying to bring to the attention of writers issues of uh, prominence. And by the way, the people that we bring to the writers' rooms turn out often to be the basis for characters that appear in series. And because of that, we, we pay special attention to having women and minority scientists um, and um, doctors uh, among the people who come, because that illustrates, without saying a word about it, that these are people that uh, do this kind of work.